Hey guys, on today's episode, we're gonna be working on this interior disaster. It's a 2009 Chevy Silverado owned by my buddy Roman. I play hockey with him and he is a home builder, but he hasn't cleaned the inside of his car since 2009. As you can tell, there is junk absolutely everywhere. So we're gonna do some work on that. Now, if you're new to my channel, I've been in the pro detailing game for about 20 years. Eight of those I've been on YouTube. I have hundreds of videos, everything from how-to car care for the weekend warrior all the way up to the professional and everything in between. So if you're excited about detailing and wanna learn more, Subscribe to my channel here, click on the notification button for all things car care. So without further ado, let's clean this disaster. The first step of course is to empty out the car, which is pretty obvious, but because I have no idea of what kind of dust, bug, and or chemicals or whatever is lingering in the car after nine years, I put on glasses, mask, and gloves, which I think is a wise idea. If I don't do that, I tend to get like a sniffly or a runny nose or whatever at night if I'm working on really dusty cars. The challenge here is actually organizing all the junk from the endless amount of tools, nails, and screws. As you'll see later, the amount of stuff removed from the truck actually filled up my garage floor. Once the heavy stuff was out of the cab, next was cleaning the bed. It took about 20 minutes just to be able to see the bed liner, which had a few creatures making a home in it. Then I gave it a healthy sweeping and found an old wood splitter Roman had lost nine years ago, so I guess I was already making progress. Once all the dirt was piled up at the end of the bed, I used my anvil nail magnet or what they call a nail sweeper to collect the stray nails and prevent them from clogging up the vacuum hose or falling into the driveway. These magnets are about 10 bucks from Home Depot and they're super useful in helping you avoid a punctured tire down the road. Then I vacuumed up the leftover dust and dirt with the wet vac. Now that everything is completely out of the truck, I focused on the 10,000 stray nails in the cab with the sweeper. Then I quickly vacuumed up the carpets to pick up the last of the sawdust, the papers, and the wedged in nails. And then I popped off the plastic trim where possible to clean around the crevices. Step one of the actual cleaning is the headliner. Now it's the same idea as washing the exterior of your car. You work from top to bottom on the interior as well. Now on average details, it's usually best to avoid cleaning the headliner if it doesn't need it because they tend to be sensitive, but this one clearly needs it. To do this efficiently, I used shag fabric cleaner mixed 50-50 with warm water in an aerator and gave it a gentle stir. Next, I pulled out a clean three inch microfiber cutting pad from Meguiar's and put it on a three inch DA. Spraying foam on the liner helps avoid over soaking the fabric and allows you to be a bit more forceful with the scrubbing because you're not twisting thin or soaking wet liner. Thank you. 
With the machine on speed two or three, meaning it's very low power, allow the microfiber to pick up the dirt as you work the hydrogen peroxide based shag into the stain. Now, I only really tend to use a machine on the headliner if I need to clean the entire roof, not just a spot cleaning. So here's a quick thought for all the nerds out there. Using a machine on the headliner can be thought of or as the same concept as wet sanding by hand. When you wet sand the paint by hand, your pressure can be uneven. That's why we use blocks. That's why they're so useful. But when you wet sand with a machine, it tends to be more consistent, even pressure, and actually less aggressive, which is counterintuitive. You think, oh, I'm using a machine. It's going to be more powerful. That's not the case. I think it's a similar concept to using a machine and a microfiber pad on the headliner, especially when you have a lot of real estate to cover. The irony is, it's actually less aggressive than scrubbing by hand. Next were the door panels, which had caked on grime. Now trucks, in particular older trucks, tend to have very hard plastic doors with no leather or sensitive trim, so cleaning it is actually easier. To do this, I filled an aerator again, 50-50 mix with lather and warm water, and foamed the entire door. Then I used an old Porter K polisher with a medium stiff bristle brush to scrub the hard plastic. It goes without saying, but obviously I wouldn't use the same technique on a sensitive door panel with leather or trim found on most luxury cars today. In those cases, light mists of product, microfiber towels, and interior detailing brushes, those are way safer and way more strategic on those types of doors. We repeated the process on the center armrest with some help from my buddy Dan, as we had a few more cars to sort out later in the day, and he was giving me a hand. When you're working in tight spots like cup holders or cubbies or pockets, compressed air by far is one of the most helpful and useful tools, especially on interior detailing. Next, I repeated the same steps on the dashboard and the radio, but this time without the aerator for a more precise liquid shot, I used it straight out of the bottle. A wide, soft bristle brush can be helpful on the front of the dashboard because it's a lot of space to cover. All the liquids used here can be found on my website as well as links to my favorite tools under the training section. With the headliner and the doors done, next up were the seats. The safest way to clean the fabric is the tamping method. Notice the brush has a slight angle and very short bristles. Hitting or tamping disperses the loosened soil into the shag cleaner. Then it's either absorbed with a towel or in our case, it's extracted. Only use a twisting or a scrubbing machine when it's absolutely necessary because the stains are so stubborn and they won't be released because this is actually gonna damage the material or cause it to become fuzzy, nappy, or dreadlocked. Now, if a stain persists, you can use a machine in those isolated areas or even use a scrub pad and your finger for a really aggressive approach when necessary. But in most cases, tamping is actually surprisingly effective and way gentle.
The heel of the driver's foot is a hot spot for dirt, so I used the DA here because it was so bad I couldn't do any more damage to it. Afterwards, I re-vacuumed to absorb the leftover cleaning solution, and then I used compressed air to help wick the fibers and blow the last of the remaining dirt directly into the suction of the vacuum. For the worn out plastic trim we took off earlier, I dunked it into a bucket of foam soap, scrubbed with a drill brush, and then compressed air dried and reinstalled, but notice that the door jams are still really dirty. This needs to be taken care of before you deliver it back to the customer. Once all the carpets were done, we emptied out the last of the dirty water from the extractor for a total of 150 ounces of smelly wastewater. With the doors open and the carpet drying, next was the cleaning of the bed. With any interior detail, I typically wash the outside of the car to give the customer that good experience when they arrive to pick up their car, but my goal is really to wash the door jams properly with soap and water and then rinse them down. Afterwards, I open up all the doors and use a bit of spray wax and a throwaway microfiber towel to clean up the last of the drips and any leftover dirt. My very last step was to clean the glass with a mini squeegee and a microfiber towel, and of course roll down the window to quickly clean the top of the glass. Then I had to reorganize and repack the bed of the truck. Well guys, after a very long and hot day, it's about 91 degrees right now. I think we're uh, rounding third on this job. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the inside. It's looking pretty good. There's some spots where there's just no carpet left to do anything with, uh, but take a look at it. All right, so like there's a spot right there, very obvious. Uh, there's just no carpet left. Otherwise, it's looking pretty good. This is just handprints. More importantly, the ceiling Oh, the roof is way better. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of issues going on there. I guess construct, construction guys put a bunch of stuff in their car, obviously. Doors look good. Um, they're just, I mean, that's all, that's just chewed up. That's actually scratches. Same thing back here. Clearly just throwing stuff in the car all around there. Let's see, pretty good. Some sort of, um, I'm going to play with that a little bit later. There's some sort of, uh, it's not gum, it's something else. It's some sort of construction type thing. I'm going to ask him what that is later. Let's see these. Seats are good. Again, there's some, these things are all scuffs. Kind of like uh, the material has been twisted. Let's walk around to the back. That's like a thousand times better. Look at the ceiling, brand new ceiling. I must, have, I must have a thousand screws on my driveway, but that's okay, we'll get those in a minute. Again, all scuffs right here. Scuffs, scuffs, scuffs. Looking pretty good, seats good. Ceiling, way better. And the same idea with the driver's side door. Clearly he puts lots of stuff in there, you know, scratches it. And 
that. I can't do anything. That's missing carpet. And that's missing carpet. And the seats, obviously, just getting in and out is a bit, wear, a bit worn. But overall, I think it turned out pretty good. Look at all the dust and everything is gone. And the headliner looking good. But other than that, the only thing left I have to do is to take all this junk. I use that word affectionately. All this stuff and put it back in here. But I went to Home Depot and I bought some, uh, some uh, containers there to put this stuff in and help them organize a little bit. So I'll do that the rest of the evening. And then tomorrow I have to go on my driveway and pick up all the rest of the nails. I'll do that first thing in the morning and make sure there's no missing. I think I got all of them, but you know, there's always one or two missing. As always guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. You have 5,000 levels? Yeah, all right, see, all right. I, I, I need what I need, man. All right, so, all right, so pick, you decide. I mean, it's your truck, but okay. I tried to get what you wanted there. It's almost, oh, wow. It's almost, it's almost a shame to put anything in it. I now. know, that's what I'm saying. You should put it in the back. You got your kids, look at that. Holy. You should see all the dirt we pulled out of it. Look at your roof. I mean, you're attached. Yeah, no. <laughs> Up there, we, we shampooed the whole thing. Wow. Smells nice, too. Oh my god, it's really, I'm not gonna put anything in here now, I guess. Apparently, that's why I bought the bins, and maybe yeah, if you no, you fixed, I couldn't figure out how to get this to work. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a stationary. Oh, is, well, the other one over there opens. Yeah, no, it, it's all messed up. Oh, very. So we can... I can just toss everything in there. Well, I mean, make it nice. Uh, it's, 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 it's not 